Good morning, I'm Verik, and I like tea. You might be wondering why this teenager went out of his way a year ago to make videos about urban cycling. And I'm glad that you've asked, because I have a short and a long answer for that. The short answer is simple. I believe that a cycling city is a happier city for all, even for those who can't or don't use a bicycle. And this is something that I wish to create while I'm still alive, for people around today and future generations to enjoy. Well, the long answer is a bit longer. I believe that there's so much more that can be done to make Singapore a better cycling city. For example, there's lack of data, be it walking and cycling counts before and after the implementation of infrastructure, as well as the patterns in which people interact with it. This may result in streets and roads being designed and awarded grade A levels of service for cars. I'm pretty sure a grade A experience isn't felt by people outside of one. And there's also a lack of urban cycling representation in policy forums or focus groups. This imbalance can result in infrastructure design or policies that overlook walking and cycling. This one is personal, but peering out of a BTO flat and looking at the neighbourhood street downstairs having 6 to 8 lanes of car traffic with 4 slip lanes, I don't know how I can raise a kid in a place like this, nor survive here when I'm older and less mobile. One day I sat down and told myself, there's no way I can afford to stay apathetic, only to feel jaded and cynical in the future. I want to convert my negative energy into something useful, and I gotta do something about this. So over the past two years, I've studied, analysed, and experienced cycling locally and abroad, through first-hand experience, reading road design manuals, and attending courses to learn more about urban mobility. These experiences didn't just teach me about how streets aren't set in stone, but also reminded me about how important knowledge and willpower are to make these changes happen. In cities where cycling is making a comeback after decades like where I am, cycling can be misunderstood very easily. Be it at an individual level, subconsciously viewing people who cycle as an outgroup, or at a planning level, not fully grasping the unique attributes of cycling. And because research on cycling here is just getting started, it may not be a fault at all. This is where I want to help, to make Singapore a bicycle-friendly city, through not just working on models, but also understanding user experience. For example, seeing someone walk or roll through a red signal can trigger a swift, short-term response that proposes enforcement to curb such behaviour. But by putting on a compassionate lens and wondering about the who, what, when, where, how, and why do people do what they are doing, we can come up with ideas and solutions that provide positive experiences for everyone in the long term. For example, at this T-junction, these people here started crossing even though it's red because they realised that there are no conflict points in their way. So if this can be legitimised through a two-stage crossing, I think it benefits everyone. By understanding people's behaviours, thoughts and experiences, then translating them into designs that shape our everyday lives, we can stay grounded and design better streets for people who live around them. Well, the cycling city might just be a sketch or a dream today, and you might be asking, how can we get there? And this is why I started the video series, Creating the Cycling City, where I'll shine light on urban cycling. To understanding its history, examining its current state of a humanistic approach, and embracing its diversity with a touch of humour, I hope to allow people like you and me, as well as transportation planners, to have a better understanding of cycling. Of course, it's not going to be a walk in the park, but an uphill hike to change and amend the sights and standards that we are so used to, be it as a person on the street, or a planner in an agency. After all, I'm pretty sure some people dislike me for doing this, because implementing new standards might just mean more work to do. This video series is not going to be completely about me, as I'm just a speck in this town with thousands of people living in it. It's going to feature the stories of people in neighbourhoods and communities, their preferences, personas, and patterns of movement that are simply fascinating to look at. So join me as I bring you on an adventure, diving down the rabbit hole of cycling, experiencing the joy of failing and the pleasure of discovery, and learning how we can create a cycling city together. My name is Varek, thank you for watching, and keep on cycling.